Com free performance test will immediately diagnose any hidden problems and show you how to get more speed on any computer. Plus, FinallyFast.com provides you the software you need to get your computer up to peak performance. Log on to FinallyFast.com and learn how to optimize your internet connection for faster speeds by automatically changing the settings that most people don't even know exist. Log on to FinallyFast.com and learn how to make your computer run like new by getting rid of all the nasty junk files, spyware, adware, and registry errors that make even the best computer freeze and crash. Find out why Ascentive, the company behind this amazing free performance scan, has been featured in Newsweek, Forbes, and the Wall Street Journal. If you're thinking of buying a new computer or upgrading your RAM, don't. You could save hundreds, even thousands of dollars by taking the Finally Fast Performance Test first. It's working great now. I'll send you the address in an email. FinallyFast.com. Send. Dude, it's Finally Fast. FinallyFast.com. Take the free performance test at www.finallyfast.com. Get the software you need to get your computer running at peak performance and your internet connection speedy, even while watching video. Finallyfast.com makes everything faster, even on a brand new computer. I'm booted up. It's that URL I should look at. Finallyfast.com. Hey, my computer's fast. Finally. Finallyfast.com. I Ching, I Ching yeah. and rune reading. Runes, and runes are typically very uh, Celtic in, in tradition, no, is that right? No, they're Wrong. actually Norse or Anglo-Saxon okay. in tradition. It's the Norse or Anglo-Saxon alphabet. And the site I recommend for divination is one by Mary Greer, and they point to everything having to do, especially with Tarot. But um, you can start there and find anything you want to find about divination. So I can actually find out what's in store for me for the next few months then? Give it a try. I think I will. Well, and are there any other things that, about websites related to the Wiccan religion that would be important if people were wanting to understand a little bit more about the na nature religions, some other places to find out about the uh, chapter and some other stuff? Well, there's the High Plains Magic page, has some excellent links, and the um, Celebrate the Earth page. Um, I went, actually, I went out on uh, Alta Vista today, and there were over 15,000 sites with the word Wicca in them. <laughs> that's a lot of so information. <laughs> so there's um, definitely some interest in there. That's right. Uh, Yahoo under People in Society Religion, which Wicca and Witchcraft. You can find a lot of links. Um, we're out there. Definitely. Uh, so if you want information, the web is the place to come. So now how does, with, with any new religion, uh, co communication and, and telling people about what you're all about is really important. So I, I assume that the web has definitely made an impact on how you how you've been able to continue the religion and, and well the, the covenant itself was formed as a networking organization and so with the internet as the ultimate network we're definitely out there trying to get our message across but witchcraft is a very loaded word in this culture and very misunderstood so by being able to publish ourselves and get out what it means to us we can maybe dispel some of the myths and misunderstandings well, thank you very much for the time. I really uh, in, enjoyed learning a lot more about the Wiccan religion. Thanks, Thanks very much. Hi, I'm Jewel Gods at SAC. The Persians called the cemetery the City of the Silent. You can visit my virtual City of the Silent on the World Wide Web, where you can find information about the history and art of the afterlife. Okay, the the op center has been reorganized. The battle station has been reconstructed. This was my uh, this was my my hobby today, my task. I replugged in some stuff, moved some things around, set everything up, and now it's time to play more goddamn video games. So I'm gonna 
I'm gonna actually skip most of the cutscenes because I played the first couple of hours of Wolfenstein already, and I feel like that stuff should probably be left to playing the game. Um, so, if you're worried about spoilers or whatever, um, I guess that at much I won't won't be spoiling. But the levels themselves are pretty fucking cool, so that's gonna be happening. But most of the demos that they did pre-release were for the beginning part of the game. So if you've been following it, you've probably already seen it. Something like that. Nick Castle, you just beat this game 20 minutes ago. Is everything you like about the first game but better? That's my impression so far. Also, God, this music is great. Mick Gordon killing it again, I assume? I just, I'm sorry, I'm just making sure... Oh, that was it, though. I'm trying to make sure subtitles are on. Or is it? Subtitles, all right. There we go. Watch the bloody cutscenes? I I do. I have. I'm just not gonna stream them. Oh, thanks for the resub. Fist of for walking. Ultra settings FP 60 FPS or get the fuck out. Yeah, it's uh it's gonna be that. It's gonna be ultra 60, except through Twitch is a pretty tight bottleneck to get through, so it's gonna get compressed down to 720p60. But hopefully it'll still represent the game well. Oh, you can't skip this part. Well, I'll, I'll skip the cutscenes that I can. But I guess first they gotta do a little PTSD. Canic, what monitor do I use? I don't remember the brand. But it is a... Let's see here. My first New Order playthrough, I saved Fergus, so I feel like that's... That's the timeline I'm going to do the first time I play through this game as well. 1080-60? No, 1440-60. Or, sorry, 1440p, 144 Hz. And I've actually started this game on PlayStation, so it's going to be interesting to compare it to PC and see how, how it runs. See the docket exposed on the H3 podcast? No, what do you mean? What do you mean by exposed? Fergus's best timeline? <laughs> I like him, but Wyatt's cool too. And apparently Wyatt develops an acid habit, so I'm really curious to see that. I'm looking forward to playing through the game twice, basically. The first time I'm going to, uh... I'm gonna play through, like, hard... I might, I might bump it down to difficulty, but I picked, like, the second to hardest difficulty. And then hopefully I can stack up all of the, uh, the perks and then run it through on the hardest. Hey, you intellectual, can you say hello to me and my girlfriend, Allie? I can. Hello, Curtis and Allie. Welcome. Just installed Destiny 2, reading about classes. Cool. Wolfborn, what do you think you're going to go for? What time period is this game set in? Modern day is late 60s, I believe. Modern. This is a flashback to when BJ was a child, which would have been the 30s? Can't skip it. Gotta see the terrible things happen. Can you imagine that it is what they call an well, the science naming scheme is annoying. New Order, the Old Blood, New Colossus. Yeah. I guess it may kind of may kind of explain where in the timeline it goes, because Old Blood is before New Colossus. Or sorry, New Order. Shit, I already messed it up. Read the rest of Kotak article about Visceral Star Wars games. You're right, it was not a game. The main guy you played as couldn't even hold a gun in the state it was in. This is why things get cancelled. Did you get Odyssey and Origins as well? I did, Beefiest Taco. So I'm actually downloading Origins right now. I'm gonna play this for an hour or two. And then start Origins. And then probably play more Mario. Who knows? There's just so many fucking good games out right now. I'm so... Hashtag blessed. Still no skipping this, huh? I mean, it's cool, but I'm not sure if you can skip any of the cutscenes. Yeah, I could skip the last time on, but I guess this is it. The game does look really good, though. 
Apparently it's only Vulcan, which is kind of interesting. That made getting it to capture on OBS a little bit of a challenge. So from the stream that you played near Automata, how was it? Grim, I really enjoyed it, but boy did it fuck me. Oh boy. Goodness. I guess that's okay to stream on Twitch. Just mark the stream as a... Uh, as mature. But yeah, on hard, you have to get through the entire tutorial to be able to get to the first checkpoint. And it's actually pretty easy to... very easy to die on hard. And the tutorial is like 40 minutes long. Yeah, this is pretty intense, by the way. Demonetized. It was already demonetized. This race matter and destiny. Not really. Don't know what I expected from a Wolfenstein game? Pretty much, yeah. Well, it's it's good it's good background. That his dad's character still plays a lot into like the themes and setting of um oh, Jesus. Themes and settings of Wolfenstein too. So it's not just brutality for the sake of brutality. How did Nero Tomita fuck you? I just told you, Grim. I was playing on hard, and uh, you but you die in basically two hits. Um, and then the first boss actually killed me in one hit. But since there's no checkpoint throughout the entire tutorial, if you die, you have to play the whole thing again. Which uh. I didn't know you could go comfort your mom. I think his head's messing up. I don't think he's supposed to be staring down there. Mm. <laughs> Blue cast on your face is aesthetic as fuck. I love it. Yeah. A lot of aesthetic going on. But, uh, yeah. So I played through the tutorial at least five times, got way to the end, got hit with one thing I'd never seen before, dead. So, I'm gonna have to drop the difficulty down to normal before I can get to a point where I can save. That's a manual save. Can you do that in the tutorial though? I don't think you can. Oh, you did? At least on Xbox? Are you... Hmm. Was it New Game Plus? I'm gonna be frustrated if I just missed that. If I could save at any point. Because that would actually make it interesting. I'd like to try and beat that tutorial on hard. <sighs> so you just go... You can go to the menu and save whenever? Because no one in chat mentioned that when I was getting butt-fucked over and over again. Uh, would you recommend playing the first Wolfenstein? Or could you start from here? I mean, you could start here, but the old Wolfenstein is really, really good, so you should play it. Oh, Jesus. Shoot the dad, you can't. Doesn't let you look that far. So you can skip those. Alright, now we're good. 
Now the, uh... That stuff's important. Because so much of this game, so much of this setting depends on that sort of mentality, that sort of feeling. That you're owed something and other people are taking it from you. And you would rather the system be skewed in your favor than have to actually compete in the world with everybody. I'm sure, I'm sure his tale of woe is very genuine and he tried real hard, but I think part of the idea- oh, okay, I need to, I need to turn on push to- or toggle aim. I think part of the idea is character- characters or people like that get into this- this thing where, uh, they feel as though there's a lifestyle that is being robbed from them because other people are like- other people are, um, preloading off their work or something like that. Yeah, beefiest, I'm skipping the cutscenes on purpose. Because I don't want to give everything away. I feel like this is something that um, people should uh, people should buy and play. But I also want to play it myself. So there you go. Um, every game puts hold or toggle aim down sights in a different spot. What's this toggle sprint? Toggle sprint is off. Is there no toggle aim down sight? Maybe not. Maybe it's just not in the game. Whatever. You're 67 hours into Persona 5? Yeah, shit. That'll happen. I'm like 95 hours? So, yeah, I'm, I'm also playing on a hard difficulty. And this game's not easy by default. I think that's another thing that that took a lot of people by surprise with New Order. It's how hard it was. How it made you actually have to, like, use the levels and learn the levels. There's, like, a run-and-gun aspect. That if you... You have to kind of break your Call of Duty training with Wolfenstein. The tendency is to find a good piece of cover and just pick people off one at a time. But if you do that, they'll whittle you down, and the AI is actually pretty good about getting behind you. So it actually works a lot better to be sprinting through the level, kill people, and be constantly picking up armor and health. Um, kind of like the original Wolfenstein. What's up, BB Number? Are right, you giving me a hard time for fun? I gotcha. Then continue. I would never want to rob, your, rob you of your sport. I'm playing on Death Incarnate, it's miserable. Let me check and see what I'm at. Um, because, yes, or Kodiak, I... Terribilly, okay. Death Incarnate's the one right above that, I think. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. Um... And also, yes, his, his gun is right between his legs. And I'm pretty sure that's not... Not... An accident. Shit. See. Took a few bullets and I'm down to 10 health. Hang on. I think I got him though. On, no Can I always play on Mean Lieben? Is that, is that one of them? Yeah, power. There, there was a difficulty that was grayed out. So I think there is a hidden difficulty. Yeah, Chorizo, for the New Order, I started on hard and actually found it really challenging. Same! I played it on hard and it was... It was actually a really cool experience. Um, I really enjoyed it. There were some parts that were real motherfuckers, but... Uh... It was... I enjoyed it. I thought... I, I'm, I'm glad I did it. And then I played it again on harder, but, like, once you get... Once you get enough perks and stuff... It's not as, uh... It makes it a little bit easier. I am curious... Nice. I am curious how, um perks in New Colossus will affect the, the difficulty curve. The perks seem a lot more incremental. Are you on hard right now? It's hard to say. I'm So there's normal, hard, and harder, and then hardest, and then one even harder than that. I'm on like... Because Doom had a lot of them too, so... I am the setting below the hardest before you beat the game. So, I guess including unlockable difficulties, I'm also, uh, I'm th third hardest? 30? I don't know. It's really fun because of the challenge. I'm not sure why, but making the game, making the game more challenging really puts me more into the game. Yeah, I think it, it matches the, I think there's a lot of things that, like, make more sense or feel more immersive in some ways. Like, when you... When the enemies are difficult... 
then your ability to kill a lot of them m means something else. The fact that you can kill a shitload of Nazis, each of which can kill you in two or three shots. The fact that you can do that, it's like, well, okay, it makes sense that BJ is like a renowned Nazi killer in this setting. Even if it takes a, a few tries sometimes. Game of the year so far? That's tough to say right now. Um, probably still Zelda, but I haven't... It's like gonna, it's probably going to be Zelda or Mario. Um, but between the two, I, I don't know. I haven't put enough time in Mario. This game is fucking gorgeous, by the way. Are you guys getting a pretty steady frame rate? Because I, I had to jiggle some uh, capture settings, kind of like with Destiny. Some of the PC releases this fall have been kind of non-traditional in terms of the way that they, uh, they use displays. Stealth wheelchair? I'm trying to be. That was one of the things... So that's one of the things that actually makes harder difficulties in Wolfenstein really important or really interesting is that if you're playing on a hard difficulty your ability to whittle down enemy forces without setting off alarms is vital so it's confrontations in Wolfenstein tend to go like this like like this basically is about to he saw me um, you'll take as many enemies out as you can while being stealthy and then once that goes wrong it's just a shootout And it benefits you massively to have fewer enemies on the field when the shootout starts. So, like, there I took down two or three guys. And granted, it's a tutorial level. But took down two or three guys. Then started. Then went hot. And that makes the, sh that makes the firefight a lot easier than having five or six people when you start going guns loud. So, that's one of the things I really liked about uh, Wolfenstein's combat that is pretty unique to playing on harder difficulties. If you're on, like, medium or easy, you can just shoot through most stuff. I mean, it'll, it'll still it'll still keep you honest, but... I think that was one of the better things about Wolfenstein's combat that, uh... People didn't necessarily discuss or acknowledge? I'm just saying it's the Dark Souls of, uh... It's the Dark Souls of Wolfenstein. Which itself is the Dark Souls of shooters. Oh, shit. What? What? Oh. I didn't see him. Oh, I'm fucked. This is bad. This is bad. Fuck. Reload! Faster! Ugh. I got 17 health. Woof. <sighs> the cards start to... F they hear the squeaking of my wheel coming down the hallway. I would say they'd invent a legend about it, but they're already... They already call him Terror Billy, so... Are the cutscenes shot similar to the first Wolfenstein? Um... Yes. I haven't seen anything similar to, like... So there's some straight-up Tarantino stuff in the first Wolfenstein, the, the uh, sequence where he's, like, in the basement with a Nazi, like, getting all the chainsaw gear together. There hasn't been something roughly equivalent to that yet. Shit. But, uh... Fuck. Let's see if I can... I don't know if they could shoot you while you were, uh... while you were hitting switches. For a second, it looked like that gun was his dick. That is... That's very much the point. That's why he puts it like that. No, I... I I believe thoroughly that that's intentional in this level. Alright. Oh, he's got a helmet on. Shit. Well, yeah, there we go. Stealth kill. I guess I can wheel over behind that guy. Loved all the Tarantino vibes in the first game. That's, st that's A lot of that is still there. And especially since it's in the 60s, Tarantino obviously has a um, nice little boner for that time period. That's awesome. <laughs> Just basically did a skateboard trick to land behind that guy. Okay. And then one, another major reason I wanted to play on PC is to be able to aim. Uh, playing on harder difficulties, it's kind of necessary to have like the the fine aim to get people in the head. And more flashbacks of the father. I think so. I haven't played far enough to know that for sure. It's no auto pickup. Uh, patch up, I'm not sure. I actually don't mind. I don't mind tapping E. I don't know why. It's just, it just doesn't bother me that much. But yeah, that's. That is a weird thing, right? Not a lot of games do that, or ask you to do that. Fuck. 
That's cool, his like shadow actually leans out of the chair. They actually animated his his model like lean over the the armrests. That's pretty cool. Pretty uncommon too. Sometimes you can run directly over stuff and you can pick it up. Alright, well let's test it. Alright, so. Yeah, yeah, there was a clunk. Okay, so yeah, if you run right over it, you'll pick it pick it up. So basically hitting E just means you can grab it from further away. So that's not so bad. Man, id tech is so fucking great, though. This game is such a... This is actually the first time I'm playing it on PC, and this is running superbly. It's just really smooth, really responsive. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I recall this kind of being the first... What's up, Kala? Oh, hey, Anna. I saw you there a while ago and didn't say anything. My bad. So, as I recall, this is like the first... This is the first area that's actually pretty challenging to, to stealth through, and if a firefight breaks out... You're basically surrounded. Yeah, see, you already got already got spotted. AI, AI, AI in this game is it's no joke. Turn the. And then, like, there's these traps you can turn on. Oh, shit. Wheel! Oh, I thought that was a grenade. I guess it was just a flaming chunk of something. But yeah, I, I struggled with the, this area before. I mean, that precision aim really does help. Alright, here we go. Digga 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 digga. Shit. Oh, they frame you as terrorists. Can't wait to play this. Gonna put some hours on Destiny 2 and beat the old blood before I pick it up. The old blood's really good. I really enjoyed playing that. It's quite sad that the ads for this game caused any kind of outcry leading up to the launch. Yeah, there's... There's a group of people who are very, very easy to upset nowadays. And it's it's a refrain that's repeated often, but... Man. Killing Nazis really shouldn't be a... Shouldn't be a controversy. Remember me already playing this level? Uh, it was in the, um... The gameplay preview we did. Maybe you're thinking of that. Whoa. Shit. Wow. Oof. I appreciate those ads on several, level, several levels. Or several levels, yeah. Now, the, the P9 stuff has actually been pretty great. I watched that... The Vice preview, which... I guess there's going to be a full thing about it. Which is kind of neat. What exploded last time? Well, who cares? No. You can't kill any Nazis if you can't wheel around. Back in the saddle, old man. Ignore the pain. Find a way to reverse the build. Get up to the cell platform elevator. How does this cause an outcry? Uh. So. I get it. Um. I'm gonna say I get it. There are there are people. Who may not be racist. Who may not be fascists. They may not be any of those things. They may just be conservatives. But they're starting to get lumped together. Basically, a, a very bad extreme is starting to... Earn labels for other people who are not... Not so extreme. So I think... Those people may feel... Ugh. Uh, unfairly labeled. And then things like this make them feel like they're getting grouped in with that again. The problem is there are a group of people who are doing that, and they are trying to get away with whatever they can without getting labeled. So it's it's tough. Wolf's Night video is five minutes, and it's really good. Okay, Enzymatic. That, that's the full thing. I thought there was going to be a longer piece. They, they keep branding it, like, on HBO. So I keep wondering if there's going to be a longer piece or something. How do you bring up the weapon wheel on... 
Ah, shit. Fuck. Ugh. Clackety clack of the keyboard is relaxing? You know what? You're not the first person I've heard that from. That it's actually a, a pleasant sound. I think I think I understand why. That's kind of why I like it. There's a certain like I don't I don't know how to describe it. It's like a nice little treble cr scratchiness to it. His left arm's gonna get jacked from all this wheeling. Goddamn right it is. His left arm's already jacked though. BJ is a a mountain of a man. Texas muscle. Hey bitters. Oh, he's studying for exams. I remember that. Man, I would have I would have been so up on Yeah, so up on streams and stuff. I watched a lot of StarCraft when I was studying for exams. SMG is the best weapon in the game. Yeah, because it has a suppressor. Oh shit. Come and catch me, Nazi. Come and catch me. <laughs> Excellent. Whenever I'm doing uni work or writing essays on my PC, I was so productive because of all the clicking. Yeah, and it it just feels good. It feels percussive. I mean, it does annoy people. Uh, when I first got this keyboard, my girlfriend got really frustrated. <laughs> These soldiers fucking suck if they can't take out an injured wheelchair guy. I mean, they do. If it helps, they acknowledge as much in, like, the story of the game. They're like, what? why does this guy have a supernatural ability to kill Nazis? They, they kind of imply in the first game, too, that that's why uh, he and Anna fall in love. She hates Nazis so much... That she actually gets pretty turned on by how many Nazis he can kill. There was some, like, I think it was Anna's grandma? Or Anna herself. There were some, like, text logs in the first game about how she she basically picked up this habit of she would go out, she'd flirt with Nazis, like, she'd take one back to her apartment and then she'd kill him. She'd, like, slit their throats and then hide their bodies. And she did this for years. And I was like, fuck yeah. And it kind of talked about how. I think it might have been Anna that they were talking about, or maybe I just made this connection, but... They started talking about how she got a sexual thrill out of killing Nazis. And I was like, wait a minute, is that is that why Anna's so into BJ? Because he's just like a... Like a one-dimensional Nazi murdering machine. That that also, like, is caring and is a character, but... He does, he definitely has that... They worked enough on his character to give him, like, that weird... Almost... Almost sociological bend, where he just... He's that guy who can just grit his teeth and he does anything. He does anything he needs to do. And that includes killing a shitload of Nazis. Anya goes fucking ham in this game? Really? Cool. As BJ's weakness that he cannot kill someone who is not a Nazi, I guess. <laughs> it's hard to say what his weakness is. He's killed, a lot, he's killed a lot of things. But yeah, the other creepy thing is this game is also filled with, like, American propaganda. Um, like editorials and op-eds from people who are trying to like ease the transition of power trying to encourage Americans to adopt adopt their new Nazi overlords and stuff <laughs> right now his weakness is stairs makes sense I guess stairs aren't Nazis so it kinda makes sense it all evens out the new American order hmm this simply reinforces what we've always believed, that the American people have been held captive by a clique of corrupt elites who were never invested in their welfare. Unlike the beloved Fuhrer, who is shown with the right leadership, people will prosper. Yeah, all you have to do is like... No, they're the bad... Those guys that were there before, they are the bad guys. Don't you understand? They were keeping you down. We're going to help you. That's how you get people to just abandon their beliefs and adopt new ones. It's the message I've seen work the strongest with most humans, is that there are all these things you could have, but this this horrible thing has kept you from what you deserve. So do... If you join with me, I'll make sure you get all of the things you've been, you're entitled to. If you watch the speedrun of this game, the guy runs past every enemy while taking minimal damage. It's probably, probably silly how bad their aim is. Well, what difficulty is, is the run done on? Oh shit, Murta, nice. Downloading Hyperlight Drifter, Absolver, and Neo on PlayStation 4 right now. What do I play first tomorrow? 
Those are all great, great games. I don't know. They're all kind of similar in their own ways, too. They've all got that open world, Dark Souls of Dark Souls elements to it. I don't know, I'd say it depends on what, what you're in the mood for, but... Hmm. You could, like, scale up, just play it in the order that you said. So in terms of production value, going from Hyperlight to, to uh, Absolver to Neo. Can't remember where the where the belt was. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it's back this way. I think. Does he have a face or no? Who, BJ? Yeah. BJ's 50? What, now? Am I the only one seeing rendering artifacts on screen? I'm not seeing them. It looks pretty uh, rock solid to me, but... That's not good if you do. When you strap a machine gun to your wheelchair? I don't think you have it for long enough. Alright. 50 year old Nazi killer. That's. It's finally become hot. He has to be dad age. One thing I wasn't a fan of is how you team up with the only people worse than Nazis, which is the communists, to liberate America, then plunge it into another regime. I was... well, is that the plot of the game? If so, please don't spoil it. Um... But that is, that is a factor, sure. At least the game acknowledges that. I feel like I'm missing something. Are there pick upables? I don't know. Playing Cuphead, drinking a mixed drink. Try not to be spooked alone in my apartment. What a Saturday. Land Sword, I feel like we're doing very similar things. I'm working my way through a classy, a classy glass of white wine. Yeah, Anya's pretty cool. Just grunt. Here. Call you wanted to see what he looked like. He is a square chin Texas boy. Don't be stupid. Let's get you up. <laughs> Not a Texas tough boy. That's a yeah, that's something else. Oh yeah. Spoilers. Shit. Probably shouldn't skip all of that. Because this doesn't make any sense. You but whatever. So yeah. Wait, if you're skipping the cutscenes anyways, who cares about spoilers? Because I haven't played it. I'm trying to save the cutscenes for... people who play the game? Maybe that's... No, I haven't finished it yet, Diz. I started it on PlayStation 4 and now I'm starting it over again on PC. So I've played it a little bit. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. What's worse? Is it just playing through it entirely? Or... Maybe my maybe my idea is misguided here. I feel like... Oh, man. I was thinking he skipped them because he didn't care about the story. No, I care greatly about the story. That's partly why I'm skipping them. Because I was kind of hoping that... I wouldn't be spoiling it for other people, but... You can't skip these sections, so... There's not really a whole lot I can do. Hast. 
Yeah. Nazi fat shaming. What a bitch of a woman. Yeah. Well, they establish her as being the... She's definitely a villain in the first game. Is that meant to be Ava Braun? I think that's... I mean... If you, uh... If you extrapolate it way out, yeah, I think that's the reference point, but... Ava Braun wasn't a, uh... Like a general. Ugh! Could form in the swing. the new order that one chick who you crushed with a fucking robot hand I want them to top that with her yes they are pretty good about like Ugh. they'll set up an enemy and then give you a pretty a pretty satisfying uh, way to kill them Is he just okay? Fergus is a ridiculous son of a bitch. Ah, okay. That was rough, but game start. Um, hold on a sec. Let me. How do you get to the? Is it just every button or every gun has a, a weapon binding, or do you? Uh, is there a? How do you switch guns? Yep. Why does it keep wrapping around? Stop. Okay. Yeah, one through six. Okay. Good enough. There, see? He fucking tied his own tourniquet. Oh, X is dual wield. Alright. Good to know. Yep, two guns. M fucking Nazi mech armor suit. That character is actually pretty great. And this stuff is kind of why I think it's not so vital that a game like Half-Life get made. Machine games kind of... I feel like they figured it out. Uh, yeah, Kanik, I don't have a bot, but I've been, I've been streaming for like 45 minutes. <laughs> or 
Harder Cooper, yeah. Dude took that amputation better than it took hitting my head on my desk. Yeah, I like, I banged my... <laughs> I banged my arm on my, like, kitchen bar. And I complained about it far more than he did. And at least they, uh, they acknowledge it. Um... Uh, tool to open hatch. Aha! Oh yeah. A lot of things you can do with a hatchet. A lot of things indeed. Nazi. I've always loved this interpretation of BJ where he's just constantly muttering to himself about killing Nazis. <laughs> like, he will quote poetry and talk about killing Nazis. I love it. The, like, warrior poet. Fuck. That's awesome. Upo is short for Unterseeboot. I'm sure you can translate that for yourself. The German are very creative. Silent type or mumbling to himself? A little bit of both, I think. Oh, hold V, okay. It's kind of a bummer, though. I don't understand why they make you wait so long to get a suppressor. It's kind of important to have a suppressed gun in this game. Uh, I mean for the stealth mechanics to work at all. I remember the first one, if you fall off a bridge, you mutter stupid way to die. That sounds about right. Your last name is a German word. Yes, it is. Yes, indeed it is. It is a very basic German word. Like they taught us back in boot camp. Take out the commanders first. Ugh, fuck. I'm curious to, uh, to hear what the Enigma codes are all about. So that was like, it's basically one of those weapon loud moments. So, let's kill some Nazis. Yeah, Cyborg C? Makes sense now, doesn't it? Anya's got good taste. I miss the wheelchair of doom. Yeah, now it's the cyber suit of doom. Doesn't quite have the same mystique, does it? Okay. Oh, uh, huh. Okay. I'll have to figure out how the weapon switching works, but... Can't wait to see what the Amiibos do in the Switch version. Oh my god, I didn't didn't even think about that. That's pretty great. Hello, Brody. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, there's been a number of games that, uh, because I am a spoiled asshole, I've gotten like console codes for Evil Within 2, Assassin's Creed, and I'm like, eh, that's cool and all. But, man, do I want that 60 FPS. Crisp. Resolution. So, yeah, it's, it actually looks like Twitch is behaving uh, pretty well tonight. I'm sending a slightly higher bitrate to Twitch. I'm hoping that the uh, the stream looks looks good and is per performing well for everybody. Is new Assassin's Creed any good? I don't know, Power Armor. We'll, fig we'll find out together in just a bit here. I wanted to play through a few levels in Wolfenstein, then I was going to switch over to uh, Assassin's Creed Origins. Because, yeah, I'm really excited to start it as well. Um, I, I finished up um, Syndicate, and I was like, ugh, boy. I'm done with uh, I'm done with Assassin's Creed for a little bit. And that's kind of wearing off. It's been a, it's been a while now. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to start Origins, provided that it's significantly different. We'll see. You went into as a motherfucker on Nightmare? Yeah, Kodiak, I'm... I'm actually excited to play that as well, so I downloaded that on PC. Um, and it's like, 60 FPS, crisp SP... So the thing is, like, I feel more empowered to play games on harder difficulties on PC because the aim is so critical. 
And in Evil Within, if you can hit your headshots and stuff like that, you save bullets and all that stuff, I feel like factors into it. So, I, I guess in a way it's like it's easier on PC, but it, it lets me experience the game that way. I've wondered about that. If that's like a... Like how that affects a game's difficulty curve or perceived difficulty curve. I feel that way with Ubisoft games in general. Criminella, that you're just kind of done with it for a while. Yeah. They're, they, they've they been putting out a lot of games in that Ubisoft style. That tank looks explosive. Yeah, it does. Consoles have auto-aim, which makes it easier. Automated security system. Yeah. Oops. Shit. I need to get that back. So hold on, I need to rebind some stuff. I have like... It's funny because... Game controls are getting largely homogenous on console. But on PC there's usually still one or two like weird... Weird... This or that kind of things. Is control... Is crouch control or is it C? Is grenade R or is it melee? Or F? Like, people still move around on that stuff. Anyway, melee should be mouse 4, and grenade should be mouse 3. I have decreed it, and that, that there it shall be. Uh, provided I can find grenade. And Enable left hand cycling? I don't know what that means. Toggle dual wheel, throw grenade. There we go. Excellent. The only <laughs> there's discussions about online etiquette about what games it's okay to be to, to like troll in. I feel like it's expected in GTA Online. GTA is a game about being an asshole, so it never bothers me a lot. It never bothers me thoroughly when people are dicks in that game because it's almost like it's expected. Where am I going? I got turned around. Let's see here. Oh, right, right, right. I didn't get turned around. I just rebound my shit. Alright. Why did I remember where this tank was? There it is. Okay. Hackers isn't annoying. Hackers is kind of another thing. It's like... Game intended trolling. Where, like, you have a, uh... You have an overpower, like you have a, a fucking jet, and you're blowing up people. Okay, like that makes sense. That that is setting appropriate. But uh, oh shit. So that that part's weird because two di two dudes come around the same direction at the same time. I don't know how you were supposed to avoid sounding that particular alarm. It may be a, actually kind of like a setup so that you you learn about what alarms are. Shit. Fucking is he on the lower deck? He must be. There you are. Okay. God, I love when they run down the hallway single file. Whoop! Shit. Fuck! That's weird. I was holding Oh, because right click is not the right gun, right click is off gun. I'm alarmingly good looking. Well thank you, Jokomo. Yakamal. Not sure exactly how to pronounce your name, but... Alright, so, yeah. How are you supposed to, like, stealth through this part? I don't know that you can. Yeah, he sees you immediately. And this guy just gets to open up on me. can't really just sit in one spot either because they just keep coming in, man. When there's an alarm going, it's... it's... Ah! Fuck. Alright. I'll take it. 
And he's calling for backup. Damn it. Is he down here again? No, he moved. Ugh! Fuck, there he is. Oh, I see him now. There we go! Oh, he was already dead. <sighs> okay. Hey! Stack up some helmets, pick up a shitload of guns. Feels good. Oh! Music's still playing. There we go. I guess that was it. BJ. Lurk mode activated. Welcome gone crazy. Feel free to lurk as long as you like. It's weird that they put those things there. You don't get you don't have that gun yet. But those that charges a gun that you lets you open these crates, so I guess it's for New Game Plus. Maybe you'll have that on a separate playthrough. Weird. Weird and strange. I need to find more armor. Feel bad for all the whales who watch shark cards and some 12 year old found scripts off Google and just dropped the cash for himself? Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like a reckoning is coming for 12 year olds, or has, has already arrived. Waves of bands have gone out. It is, it is getting oddly ubiquitous though. It's hard to, hard to have a session in GTA anymore without at least one hacker. <laughs> Usually have to hop sessions two or three times. Can't be the only ones concerned that Bethesda got Wolfenstein considering the Elder Scrolls series, right? Nate, I'm unsure what your concern is stemming from. Are you saying the Elder Scrolls is bad, therefore Wolfenstein will be bad? I'm not sure where your concern is. Is rooted. That's more armor. I'll take it. Alright. I feel like I've successfully plumbed all the pickups out of this area. Back to my infiltration loadout. Bay. Jesus Christ. I remember... There was a time in which I couldn't even imagine games looking this good. These crazy fucking Nazi science rooms. Cutscenes. Maybe a dumb idea, but I'm dedicated to it now. Heading back to our people. I hate to ask. Please stick around. So I can keep your wings a little longer. I'm glad that the game is looking good, or at least the stream is looking good. Because this game really does deserve a really great can- Oh! Hello! Whoa! Alright, alright, alright. You chill out now. Fuck. Fuck. Yeah. I emptied. I had two clips to kill him and it didn't work. I remember when Star Fox 64 came out and everyone, myself included, was like, best looking game ever, we have Pete. Yeah. It's nice to have those moments. Alright, I'm coming in prepared for this guy. Skipping cutscenes? Ah, I'm only skipping them because I've seen them before. And I don't want to spoil them for other people. Oh, that's why that's in this room. Duh. So, I don't know. I'm... I'm realizing that may not be the best approach, because it actually may end up re misrepresenting the game to people. Why isn't that going away? But yeah, fucking lasers. Okay, the tutorial message can go away now. Recharge. Should charge your Prius. That's essentially what I'm doing. Alright.
That was a lot harder in console. <laughs> Whoop. Fucking cool. Man, lasers are great. Did you ever make it to Diamond and Overwatch? No. I kind of gave up. I got tired of getting in that loop of like... Trying my best, but seeing no results, and then telling myself, okay, the solution is not caring about rank. But then if I stop caring about rank, I just kind of stop caring. And that's kind of what happens. I'm just like, eh, whatever. I might play the modes that come out when they launch seasonal events and stuff, but... I don't know, I wasn't seeing... I wasn't having the experience I needed to, or wanted to, um, to really continue to play it as a competitive game. And it, I think it's... And I've, I've mused about this before. Oh, shit. Kodiak, thank you for the sub. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Um. There we go. Yeah, it's because I melted that Nazi flag. Conspiracy. They were out for me. Watch for YouTube? Come on, it had nothing to do with YouTube. Told you, it's blue screen. Blue screen of death. We back. Let me make sure that... Yeah, everything appears to be still on the... On the level? That's a fast reboot. That's a beauty of a uh, solid state, my dude. Mr. Bitters. Okay, so I'm just back here. No big deal. Back to, uh, melting Nazis, that's okay. Man, why would you... Why would you even run at the guy with the fucking Doomsday laser? That's right, SSD reboot speeds. SSDs for the win. What's up, Rusky... Rusky hat? Oh, yeah. Right, there's a sub I have to... I am honor bound to celebrate with a tune. Alright. Save it real quick. Your stream isn't back yet? What'd you do, Kala? Come on now. Alright. Need a sweet tune? Close up my Steam window. Can't give away my secrets. Drag this over here. My secrets, my secret thoughts, my secret stream thoughts. What difficulty is this? Uh, call me Terror Billy. That's what this is. Hold on a minute. There's this. Yeah, there we go. All right. Try switching it off and on again. Switching what? My PC. That is exactly what I have just done. So let's see here. Hmm. Am I a cool enough guy to do this? I think I might just be a cool enough dude to play this sweet track. I think I might be. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. Uh, well, I, I lost chat actually, so I'm sorry. Who subscribed? Because, uh, that, uh, that log has been lost and gone. But whoever subscribed, hopefully somebody can help me out, post the name. I appreciate it. Appreciate you slapping that button. Appreciate you get Kodiak, or Kodak Black. Alright, thank you. I don't know why you did it, because, uh, you're gonna regret that. Because here's, here's your sub hype. I'm gonna play it for you right now.
man. What a fucking jam. Yeah, Murtaugh, that is Hollywood Undead. Off their new fucking... Their new album, Kodak Black is famous for streaming him taking a shower, then dropping his phone, showing his genitals. Also, he's a rapper. Yeah, I, uh... Uh, in... In... In Grand, I don't know who the fuck is anybody fashion. I looked that shit up on Wikipedia. But yes, Kodiak, thank you. Thank you for the sub. And actually, I gotta use the bathroom, so I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna take a break. Maybe it's time to move on to the next drink. I don't know. What's classier than white wine when it comes to a pairing? A pairing with a video game. What is your favorite Resident Evil? Oh, Rescue Hat, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Um, favorite Resident Evil? Seven. I think seven might be my favorite. Seven, then four. Then maybe two? Probably? Red wine. A martini? Okay, a martini. Martinis are pretty, pretty strong, though. But I like where your head's at. That's pretty classy. Alright, yeah, anyway. I gotta use the bathroom. I'm starting to, like, pinch up. Hold on, let me save, though. Last time I tabbed out. We got a B sod. Alright! I'll be back in a minute, guys. See you then. Pick a color, pick a face, or a flower, or a place. Make a card, make it cool. Labels on your stuff for school. Yo, 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 put a label on it. With the labels on. You know what they say? Label it or lose it. With the Casio label zone, you can label all your stuff in all kinds of fun ways. Yo, put a label on it. With the label zone. Available adventure from Casio. Cool. Quaker Oatmeal. What's not? All these cold cereals. What's hot? You are steaming strong, powered up. What's hot? Living hot, playing hot. With this complete breakfast. What's hot? 14 power packed flavors. What's hot? What's not? Hot. Not. Instant Quaker Oatmeal. What's hot? You shouldn't make noise on the bus. Yeah, if you didn't have rules, someone would get hurt. It's very cool to follow the rules. Welcome to my place. You've never been anywhere like it before. Hang with the cool gang where things go bump in the night. Today, you're on... with Bunny, mixing up some quick, when magically we were in the laboratory of the mad Dr. Foolish, who was turning the world's chocolate to Brussels sprouts. Are you guys doing the cool thing? Are you guys following all the rules? Are you eating your vegetables? Because that shit is cool. You into the Nesquik aesthetic? Shit, should I go stealth or should I just evaporate Nazis with a laser gun? This is choices, choices. Well, there's one. That is a bad guy, though. Where is this guy? Eh? Oh, he's walking. Will it make noise if I fall? Let's find out. Hup! Didn't quite seem like it. I can't throw them yet? Or I can't throw them when I'm holding this? Let me try this. No? Oh, wait. Oh, that's right. I changed melee. No. Damn it. He's gone. Finally, there's Quick Man. Use the elevator to get the extra man. Jump right down the middle to avoid the beams. Use your freeze power. Use the regular gun to beat Quick Man.
cyberpunks like to express their state of mind wherever and however possible. For instance, in their dress. Designers already have lines of jewelry for cyberpunk. Where high tech meets high society, female cyberpunks may be able to afford these dresses, which are made of computer chips and are quite costly. Witness the tech tarts in their chip couture, seemingly at every important high tech function. Mind machines are another phenomenon which evolved from cyberpunk culture. These machines directly manipulate the brain's EEG signature by the imposition of brain-friendly wavelengths. Repeated use is alleged to make the user permanently smarter, calmer, and more alert. Some say this is nothing so much as electronic drugs, but if so, then a drug suitable for the recreational tripper and stressed out corporate manager alike. Simple versions of these mind machines have become a popular cyberpunk party favor. Learn to make friends, influence people, pick up girls. Place. You slip them on, close your eyes, and then we'll uh, raise the intensity here and okay. see. If I recall, you were, I would say your sensitivity was about an eight. So, if you can describe any sensation that you're perceiving, are you getting anything? I know, it's really light in here, it's hard. I'm, but I'm bringing up the intensity and we're operating now at about 12 hertz. So what we're doing is electronically in, in stimulating the phosphines and the retina of the eye by using electronic currents to affect a neural message originating at some point in the retina. We're not really sure where exactly at this time, whether it's in the rods or the cones, the bipolar cells, the glia, or in specific neural fibers themselves.
So lots of cool Halloween-y type things coming up at the Internet Cafe. Okay, we are with Rowan Fairgrove. You are the web weaver of the local chapter of the Covenant of the Goddess website. And can you tell me a little bit about this, the, the particular website that you uh, take, uh, take If you of? come to our site, obviously you'll find information on Covenant of the Goddess. But I've also tried to make it a networking site. You can go out to other sites full of links, sites with content, um, shops, events. Um, can I get information, information about magic and, and magic, earth religion, spells, goddess spirituality, um, Wicca, and uh, other magical religions, uh, as a true, which is the Norse pagan religion. Okay. And, uh, so now, with the covenant of the goddess, you are, would consider yourself to be a witch. Is that that's correct? correct? Okay. And now, being a witch, in in my mind, has always been a lady with you know the crooked nose and the pointy hat. And you definitely don't have a crooked nose, and there's no pointy hat that I see. So tell me a little bit about what being a witch in the Wicca religion is all about. Well, I did consider bringing the pointy hat just because it's a bit of fun this time of the year. But um, I'm a priestess, okay. and uh, I'm a priestess of an earth religion based in the traditions of old Europe. So is that like the Celtic tradition? Because I know a lot of your websites had mentioning about Celtic sites and history. That's and right. My ancestors are primarily from Scotland. Okay. Hence and the red hair. Yeah. And so um, that's the part of the, of the religions of old Europe in which I'm most interested. Okay. And now tell me a little bit about if, if I was interested in getting information about spells or um, you know, witchcraft or what Wiccan religion is all about or, you know, the whole topic of alternate uh, religions, what would be some of the websites you'd recommend? Well, for spells and such, the Lysator uh, Neo-Pagan Neo -Pagan Archive okay. is an amazing content site. Uh, Ceci, the woman who runs it in Sweden, just gets every piece of, of spell, of ritual that it comes across the net and puts it in the archive so that people can access it. Now, I know in uh, in religions uh, such as yours that Halloween is a very special time of year. What What is Halloween? Because Halloween for me is trick-or-treating and getting dressed up when I was a little kid. So what is Hallow's Eve, I think is the term that right. you use, is what's that all about? Well, it's the New Year, and for us, the day starts at dusk. Okay. And uh, much like the Jewish tradition, the dark time comes before the light, the germination in the soil before the flowering into sunlight, and the year is the same way. Okay, guys, slight so change of plans. Our new year. Turns out Assassin's Creed wasn't finished downloading. So I'm going to go back to Wolfenstein for just a bit. It looks like 30 minutes. Um, so we'll see. Oh, good. Really? My save file got corrupted? Okay, I just have to do the autosave. Oh, boy. Yeah, so it, it appears, playing Wolfenstein as I am, um, tabbing out can cause my computer screen to blue screen. Or my computer to blue screen. Yep, yep, yep. So, uh, I guess I'll just wander around the boat for a little bit. Um, experience some of that. Doesn't look like the subtitles are on anymore. Did it, like, did my configuration get corrupted? It reset my difficulty. Oh boy. It really fucked everything up, huh? Okay. Okay. You want to know more about witchcraft? Well, just stay tuned, my dude. Okay, well, my controls are still there, but my configuration got overridden. Oh, whatever. Next time, next time, next time it goes into uh, BRB mode, you'll get to hear all about witchcraft. Yeah, she a thick girl. Thick German girl. Been a lot of that with other streamers. Yeah. I actually never saw this cutscene. Game audio, my bad. Hold on. Sorry about that, guys. I was scared to tab out, but I think it's okay. Apologize about that. 
most significant scientific achievement. So, hold on, I want to watch this. In order to do it cross species, you have to eat. I had, I received this. Crack up cola. Um, which is like a, it was like a promotional item for, I think, hard data or something like that. The VR game. Uh, they sent us like PR boxes, it had an energy drink in it. Anyway, it said cola on it, so I was like, okay, cool. I can mix that with rum and make myself a little, uh, Cubana Libre. But it turns out it's more of a Red Bull than it is a cola, so now I'm just drinking rum and Red Bull basically. Uh, which is not, not the uh, combination I thought it would be. I'm drinking pumpkin rum. It's not flavored like pumpkins, it's just in a pumpkin head. Actually, when this cutscene's done, hold on a minute. Yeah, Russell, it's, it's doing the trick, but it's, it's odd. Some frame dropping? Yeah, Platt. That's just Twitch, man. I don't know what to tell you. Twitch will, uh... Twitch just has, has issues taking packets. And it gets worse sometimes. Basically, as the night goes on and people go home and they start streaming Netflix, I guess, in my apartment, it just gets worse and worse. So yeah, I apologize. I'm probably going to be dropping frames here and there, but that's... That is just how it goes on Twitch. Uh, but hold on a minute. Um, I'll be right back. Let me show you guys what I mean. Yes. Pumpkin face rum. It is the spookiest and ghouliest of, uh, of rums. Actually, hold on. Let me try something here. Ooh. How, what a, what a haunted, uh, what a haunted pumpkin of rum this is. Very scary. Very enchanted. So yeah, I was like, oh, what a, what a spooky, appro Halloween appropriate cocktail. Uh, the, the, the true shame is that I actually do have Coca-Cola and I do have uh, limes, so I can make a proper Cubana Libre instead of whatever abortion this is. I mean, I'll get through it, because uh, that's just what I do for you guys. Any questions? Basically. Alright, 27 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nearly gave you a heart attack? Exactly. Too spooky. So I actually spent a lot of time wandering around the, uh, the Ava's Hammer in previous playthroughs. What are you doing in here? Yes, he drinks because he cares. Exactly, Castlemania. This is what I- this is- this is how giving I am. That I will drink pumpkin rum for you. What's weird is, like, the first time I played this, just by virtue of exploring, I found all of this stuff before I talked to Set. Suppressor right away. Um, so I actually took out the drone, and I didn't even see that cutscene of him playing with the little monkey thing. Yep, you got witch women, you got Nazi occultism, you've got pumpkin rum. What more could you ask for on this, the spookiest of, of Saturdays? Good shot. You had a skink, anime Buddharama? Like a hybrid of a dog and a lizard. Loved his walks, that's for sure. When are you gonna play Origins? When it finishes downloading Grim in about 25 minutes. I thought it had finished already. I'm pretty sure the uh, the blue screens didn't help. I think I may have, uh, like, lost some, some download due to the game crashing. Favorite mixed drink? I don't really have one. Um, it's mostly just whatever I'm in the mood for, and that can change. Sometimes I want something really fruity and light, like a tiki drink or something. 
Other times I want something, uh... Like, really, really intense and sharp. Sometimes I want something floral, sometimes I want something sour. I don't really have a favorite. I do, I do enjoy having, uh, just a sort of a, a range to pick from. Gotta go? Oh, I'm sorry, Grim. Uh, yeah, I can understand if you can't stick around, but... Looks like the frame drops are getting a little less frequent. Uh, hopefully it's not too annoying for you guys. Oh yeah, hold on a minute. I gotta set the top score, get that Steam achievement, or whatever. I was able to do this on PlayStation. I imagine it's, it's a lot easier on console, or uh, on PC. Keep getting wood to replace these targets inside the submarine. My immersion. My immersion. Yeah, I thought about playing Final Fantasy XIV for a little bit, so... I figured that would be boring. My internet stops working at 11 my time zone? Oh, shit. I'm sorry to hear that, Grim. Are you in, like, a dorm or something? Where are you such that your internet shuts off? Sister is playing Breath of the Wild for the first time. She keeps wanting my help. Well, that's kind of cute, Linky. Like you have to play through stuff, or Let's see how the old man stacks up. or she wants your advice on things. Everyone's wearing like paisley. Indeed, there are. Indeed, there are. Kind of skeptical of this assassin, or skeptical of this Assassin's Creed. Well, I think they're all at least decent. I feel as though AC is at its best when it's a city with buildings and such. This AC seems like a lot of open space. AC four being an exception. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I I'm curious because they had more time on this one, um, and it is supposed to be sort of the the new gen um, and reinvention of Assassin's Creed. I don't know. I'm I'm curious. I'm curious to see what they'll change. What they what they've decided to change as far as the formula goes. How does this game compare to Doom in terms of badassery? Uh, it's it's similar but different, which I doesn't say much. You're more fragile in this game than you were in Doom. Um, you're not as airborne as you could be in Doom. In Doom, you had like double jumps, you could uh, mantle pretty easily. Uh, in this game, you're pretty you're a lot more grounded. There's more of a stealth element. Oh yeah, this thing. Uh, so, oops. Uh, yes, we're just collecting. So, okay. This is something I noticed on the, the console version, too. I don't know if you guys can see it. Do you see how in the lower left, there is a sort of ghostly overlay of a bunch of text pop-ups? You can see, like, a plus, and then some numbers, and then some text. It looks like it is visible through the monitor, so it, you... I don't know if you guys can make it out, but... I saw that... I noticed that on PlayStation 2. It almost looked like screen burn-in. I don't know. I think that's just a, a weird visual bug in this game. The engine doesn't quite wipe the text when it pops up, showing that you picked up something or that you picked up ammo. Very odd. I thought I thought like my TV had burned in for a second, but you thought it was a stream? No, it's it's the game. The game does that. I mean, it, of all the bugs in the world, it's a pretty minor one, but it's just an interesting interesting artifact. Hmm. Al Sanchez is a cool dude. Kickflips. It's a feature. Hey, kickflips. Welcome. What are we looking at? 21 minutes. Alright. Man. Some stuff, man, just blows my damn mind. Just blows my mind. This. Somebody had to craft and create and model each each part of this. The lighting, the, the cloth, the colors, and... That's... Man, she's dead, dude. You gotta let go. Right yeah, she did. I like that hat. Cece's fashion is pretty great. God, what a poster. How you doing? 
She's wearing a tack vest, smoking a cigarette. Nice. Oh. Yeah. I saw this little cut, this little like interaction where Catherine started singing. <laughs> I did play Fury Buckets. I didn't finish it, though. This game looks like one of those E3 trailers you assume can't be real that turns out to be real. Like Vanquish? Yeah! Absolutely. Oh, yeah, Resonator. Interactive sound design is really interesting. The coffer is, um, I'm pretty sure it's just German for the bugs. Which means it's supposed to be the alternate reality version of the Beatles, I think. I'm pretty sure that's what they're going for. I was so impressed in New Order how they... Uh, yeah, that's right, there was this, You could get pickups for entire songs from the One of them was Das, das Blue U-Boat, the blue submarine. Oh yeah, the thing of um, Watch Dogs and and Assassin's Creed being in the same same universe. <laughs> like how he gets mad at her for singing and then he's got it stuck in his head now <laughs> the VA has a great voice yeah the voice acting in this game is superb really really superb at the other conference I was at the other week there was a ton of panels and lectures about VR sound and related topics it's becoming a huge market for people in my field that's something I really see myself doing I'm more into the music side of things but I'll leave the door open to it especially since I have contacts with the sound team at Avalanche Studios. All right, cool. The thing that the thing that blows my mind is like audio for VR video. So you can record VR video. You know, you can set up eight cameras or whatever and have have a process stitch it all together for you and make a 360 degree ring of video. But how do you do audio? You know, it seems like the oh that's cool. There's like a fucking it's software doesn't change much, do they? Um, it seems like the soft or the the like software is there to process 360 degree video, but it's not really there to process 360 degree audio. And that in that you have like an omnidirectional microphone that records directional data with all the audio that it's capturing, and then can then remix that live as you're listening to it, based on where you're looking. It seems like most of the effort's been put in video, which makes sense. You know, it's the it's the big thing. It is what your eyes perceive. How do you... Oh, it's arrow keys? Okay. Man. Can I get to the arcade cabinet? I think I can, actually. Wolfstone, or whatever it's called. Wolfstone 3D. Uh, it's in the cantina. So I'm gonna explore around. Oh yeah, that's where the level started. I killed Nazis here. Man. <laughs> this 
tiny little legs. It's funny because they tried to make him look emaciated. But, um... Uh, He's, he's still so big, he still looks like a ripped dude. Did you say you played through this already? Um, I played through part of this. Yeah. <clears throat> I played, uh... Like this in two more levels, I think. Oh, oh, that's weird. Alright. Uh, they actually make special 3D sound microphones. There's also certain micro rays you can do to map out 3D sound. Yeah. Is the... So, is the tech there to... Capture 3D audio, and then map that live to a viewer. So, as the viewer, it can it can it can map around and say like, okay, you're looking in this direction, you're looking in that direction. It can map it to like the the gyroscope of your phone. It can map it to the gyroscopes in your headset. Is there software that can also map the 3D audio to your left and right channel as you look around to make audio sources move independently, pre-recorded? Games can do that obviously, and they've done it for a very long time. I just didn't know if video had gotten to the point where you could play back a 360 degree video with positional audio as well. I've yet to yet to see that. Yeah. A system designed for 3D sound. Peep that price tag. I'm scared to tab out. <laughs> I don't want it to, to blue screen before Assassin's Creed finishes downloading. Which we're at 14 minutes. Septimus. That is a really cool name. Irene is pretty good too. Not as cool. I'm sorry. Came to watch the game but stayed for Lawrence's tech talks. That's right. It's the new tech TV. Price tag is 18.75k. Ugh. I believe the tech is there, I'm not entirely sure. I guess I just haven't seen any... Haven't seen any emphasis put on it. To me... To me, the biggest thing that uses 3D positional audio has been Res Infinite. And even then, it's just the, the one VR experience that's unique to that game. How long have I been streaming? Uh... Two or three hours? can't tell you for sure because my computer's crashed a couple of times. <gasps> but yeah, see, you can see that there now. I just picked up a readable, but the, here, let me find a icon, there. So the word readable is still there in kind of ghostly letters. It never actually gets overwritten in the frame buffer or whatever. And then when you pick up other stuff, it just kind of overlaps. So it's just kind of floating there. Weird. But you could have cut it earlier? Well, I'll still be going for a bit. Um, I saw a na uh, North American Speedrun Assembly Marathon just kicked up. I might watch that later, but... For now, I... Uh, are we playing this? Speedrun marathons are the best to sleep to. Yeah, Russell, there's just there's something so calming about it. Uh, cause it's both the best of best of Ness marathon and I guess uh, an impromptu NASA marathon. Are both going right now? The NASA one is primarily horror games. I think they were doing Silent Hill last I checked. Let me see. So I do know that they're. I need to I need to do the one side quest. I have to feed the pig. I know that I can do that. Hello pig. Oh, you said Fergus? I'd hoped you saved Wyatt. I'm gonna do two playthroughs. So I did Fergus because the first playthrough I did on New Order 
I went with Fergus. So for me, that's like kind of the default timeline. Um, I did play through it again with Wyatt, and I thought that was really interesting. I, I, I did... I thought it was cool and kind of kind of disappointing um, how much actually changed. There was like a lot of flavor text and stuff that was different. Um, it was disappointing because nobody really talked about it. And I was kind of dis... I was, I was like... It's weird that... First of all, that people didn't espouse this game as hardly as I thought they should have. Um, because, man, it was good. And I tried to make sure that I... I tried to make sure that I did a lot of mentions of that in, like, videos and stuff. But, it was also weird that nobody brought up that you can play through that game, New Order, I mean, multiple times, picking the, the other character, and enough changes to make it kind of interesting. So, with New Order, I played through it once on, no on like, hard-ish, and then uh, played through it again on ultra-hard, picking Wyatt instead of Fergus, and it was pretty cool. I really enjoyed that. It was a very fun experience. And there's a whole lot on this ship I haven't been to. I know that there's like a, a closet somewhere where you can get potatoes and feed those to the pig. Ah, there we go. Haven't even been here yet. Wait, Kala. Wait, no, never mind. I thought we had an Asian on our hands, but. Hello, SP Mino. Welcome. I was thinking last night, my friends dropped me into season two of Stranger Things without explanation. It almost feels like a weird mix of the 80s Silent Hill and Resident Evil. Sometimes I wonder how much TV you're influenced by games. Well, you're kind of at a weird point in the, in the Aroboros of media. Because, yeah, Stranger Things is very reminiscent of, of 80s media. And the things you listed, uh, Silent Hill and Resident Evil, are themselves very... also kind of borrowing from 80s, 80s horror tropes. Resident Evil is very B-movie. Silent Hill is a little more Eastern in its attempt, but... Jordy, you gotta go to sleep. 5, 5 a.m.? Alright, well, good night. Thanks for watching. Yeah, media is influenced by media. Yeah, very much so. Metal Gear Solid is an amalg amalgamation of a bunch of movies, most of them being Escape from New York. Yeah, the arcade cabinet. Get to that in a minute. Well, I got a beer out of it. Oh, thank you, Slot Assassin. Welcome. Welcome back, Kala. I think I jumped the gun a bit. I thought I saw an Asian person, but... I think they were just foreign. Jacob, you hate Daylight Savings Time. Why? This is the good one. We get a bonus hour. Who doesn't want free time? Gosh. There's so many artists... that do so much talented work, and all it is is just a reference point for something else. I hate not having daylight savings time. Oh, okay. That's racist. <laughs> I know. That's why I said it. I thought it was funny. Wow. These graphics sure are realistic. Oh, I will get psyched. You are inside the game, BJ. So it's interesting. Um. I wonder if the, the canon explanation is supposed to be that, thanks to Nazi science, technology is like 20 years ahead of where it would have been otherwise. Which means they could have had a game like this in the late 60s as opposed to the early early 90s. And that's when, that's when the thoughts start rolling in. It's like, that's kind of cool I guess. It would have been cool to have these games earlier. And who knows where video games would be now if something like this had hit 20 years earlier than it did. And then I thought, but still, the trade-off isn't worth it, right? Like, living in a Nazi regime isn't quite worth playing a video game 20 years before you would have otherwise. And then I thought, oh shit. Oh shit. 
there are people who will actually be totally okay with that. They are they actually might be okay with the trading and trampling of certain humans just so video games are cooler earlier on. As a white dude, I'd be okay. I mean, like, I wouldn't be one of the... I, I'm not in a group that would be sent to camps or, or, or exported, deported from the nation. And I get to play sweet video games 20 years at, before I otherwise would have. And now I'm like, oh shit, this is why, this is why dudes on the internet are into it. They think it's gonna fucking... They think star citizen, star citizen will come out if only they can... If only they can get a Nazi regime in power. I don't know. Quote while you're ahead. No, I know, I know. This is all purely speculative. But, I mean, it is, it is a, uh... I'm speaking in absurd, hyperbolic terms. But it is all, it is all kind of on the scale of how fast you want to advance versus how careful do you want to be that you're not damaging or hurting anyone around you. This, could, this is going to get clipped and taken out of context. You're going to get PewDiePied. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think in larger context, it'll... I'm not worried about that. Also, I'm not, I'm not remotely in that position. I'm not a big enough name that I have to be careful about all that stuff. Yeah, exactly, Linky. I don't have anyone that's just just salivating to take me down either. No, it's it's more like just appreciating that all that stuff's on a sliding scale. And that certain people do benefit from it. Or would benefit from it. It does make you wonder. Oh, I didn't get the secret machine gun. Well, whatever. Oh, well. It really does make you wonder, though. Like... It's not that... It's not that you're asking each individual person, like, okay, go out there... Go out there and fight. It's you're asking each person to be okay with us doing it. And here's what we're giving you for it. Here, Here's the thing that we're gonna... Like, give you in, in exchange. So, all you have to do... You don't have to do it, but you do have to be okay with us doing it. Just look the other way, and we'll give you a sweet video game. Ten years early. We'll give you a job that's not that hard to do. We'll give you a society where it's really easy for you to find a girlfriend. Like, these are the benefits we will we will throw in your face to make you... To make you more willing to ignore the atrocities that enabled that to happen. And I guess you could argue in some respect that as a as an American I already I've already accepted that trade-off. Because I'm living on land that wasn't mine. Somebody else took it for me. Did the Nazis develop a game where you killed Nazis? No. They developed a game where you are a good German breaking out of an American prison. You are you're held captured or you've been captured by the uh, the terrorists and you have to break out. So, they made their accents more American, the enemies. What a low standard for legit genocide, dank memes, and games. I mean, line, line in here, you'd be surprised what somebody would be willing to endure provided they don't have to see it. You can make similar arguments about eating meat. The way that living, living feeling animals are treated in service of, of the meatpacking industry is disgusting and inhumane. But you don't have to see it. All you have to do is buy a burger that is a dollar cheaper than it would have been otherwise. And that's one of those things. Oh, here are the potatoes, by the way. That's one of those things where you enjoy the benefit and you don't have to perceive the cost. Uh, what do they call it in legal terms? An externality. I had a fascinating discussion with, like, a, a, a litigator... And he, he was telling me that, like, all laws based on the idea of externality. The cost that you invoke but don't have to pay for um, is not your responsibility. The example he gave me was, like, let's say that you... I'm confirmed commie vegan? No, no, no. I think the system we have now is pretty good. That being capitalism. 
it's not great. There are some glaring flaws, but it's better than any other thing, as far as I can tell. No, it's more like, um... Oh yeah, the issue of externality. So let's let's say you own property. Let's say you own a rental complex and you rent it out. You get revenue from all those tenants. Let's say that there's a staircase on that property that has fallen into disrepair. And you, either through ignorance or because you wanted to save money, did not perform upkeep on it. You didn't do routine inspections of your own property. You didn't do routine safety inspections because that's very costly. Uh, a stair breaks and somebody falls. Now they have medical bills. And you as the property owner now have a cost. You have ostensibly gone months of saving money by not paying for inspections. And somebody got hurt because of your decision or your lack of decision. Are you now responsible for the cost for that person to get better? That's an external cost. And the law is there to make sure that people who are responsible for external costs pay them. The problem is... What happens when 51% of a society decide they don't want to pay the external costs? Money is the enemy of the progression of mankind? I don't know about that, Jacob. Money's a surrogate. That's the thing. Money is just an invention that is designed to establish a meritocracy. Money is, money is the abstraction of contribution to society. In a perfect society, you get the exact amount of money that corresponds with how useful you are to society. Be that working your job or performing social works. Um, it's supposed to chalk it all up to, to human freedom. If people want to pay you money to do what you're doing, they can. If you're going out every weekend and feeding the homeless and building houses, then maybe you can set up a Patreon and people would be willing to support you financially through that Patreon for your hard work and the market should be agile enough to support all this without the um, without the looming the looming control of one or many human minds that can bend systems to their will or not even react to, to people's people's needs in an efficient manner so an easy example of capitalism is uh, Nintendo makes a makes a NES classic and they don't make enough and there's a market demand so they decide to make more because there's more money to be earned in a cap er, in a communist society there'd be no reason for them to care we made this thing because the government paid us to because the government decided people wanted this in a fascist society there'd be no reason to because the Fuhrer decided that Nintendo would make 800,000 NES classics for his populace to enjoy themselves. So capitalism is supposed to abstract human decision making from the process. It's purely supply and demand. And theoretically that's great. But it also does give the human race the permission to consume resources without without repercussion. Such that the market hasn't forced that repercussion on anyone yet. So I don't know. Um not going full bleeding heart kami not going full fascist either it's more it's more appreciating that there are problems that neither of those systems can solve i think is what i would say and that appreciating the reality of why somebody might low key or even high key want either of those systems in place okay i'm going to feed this pig you happy now pig i love how socialism is always left out of these debates those middle grounds though yeah line the, the thing is, like, where does that middle ground hit? Because arguably, arguably our, our society, which is largely capitalist but partially socialist, finds a middle ground, and the middle ground is is government, you know? It's, it's electing officials that then um, take a longer-term view of things and try to, try to argue for their districts and their representatives. And theoretically, all in the wash, if you give it a long enough time scale, it, it hashes out the best for most people, and that the experiment seems to be working in that regard. But you know, what and how much, and that's when it gets that's when it gets weird. Like in America, healthcare is not seen as a, a a social right; it's seen as an industry. It is part of capitalism. If uh, if you want to heal people, you should get paid for it, and if you want to be healed, you had better have saved enough money to be healed. It's one of those things.
Yeah, anime, that's always a really interesting idea. If humanity advances the point of all factory manufacturing jobs to replace their automation, where and what will people do? Obviously, some jobs require human touch, but what do those not in such a field that requires a human interaction do? That's one of the things I always thought about um, Blade Runner, the world of Blade Runner. It seems like most things are created through automation. So... With most food being cheap, or it's actually not, it seems like it's not that expensive to stay alive, but there isn't really that many nice things to afford, so most people just kind of exist and just sort of hang out. Socialism is great if every single person in an entire 20,000 person government is a perfect selfless person who won't take advantage of it. So it's a terrible system in its purest form. Yeah, Eric, the the downfall of socialism is people either taking advantage of the system or people thinking that other people are taking advantage of the system. I tend to think it's somewhere in the middle. I think if there's any... A system that affords people help, there are people who are going to take advantage of that help. So you've already got like a... You've got a tax or a cost associated with a good and like a well-meaning initiative okay well we can control that by spending more money hiring people to police the system so you have caseworkers people who are talking with the people who receive assistance making sure that they're being responsible about it or that that assistance comes with strings attached okay the idea is then that you save money by enforcing standards by making sure those that would take advantage of the system aren't allowed to use it good idea but then you've already entered into a like a judgment area because there's always going to be someone that says there's someone taking advantage of the system still I shouldn't have to pay as much to keep these people and already you're getting out into weird territory where well you don't know who they are but you're mad about them existing these people to just have an easy time the idea of the welfare queen um, no one wants to feel taken advantage of and I feel like that idea unto itself is tough because theoretically you'd say well let's just run the math you know is anyone actually taking advantage of the system is anyone actually stealing money from you but then people don't believe the math hmm. I do love that they finally put a pin in BJ being in being a Texan I feel good about that Basic social dilemmas, yeah, Eric. Free rider dilemma is what breaks down break, breaks socialism most of the time. Blending socialism and capitalism is how Western societies get past the basic dilemmas in society. Yep. Wonderful, Mr. Noob says the ultimate answer is there is no answer. Really, there's always going to be flaws. People are when people are always going to complain. So instead of trying to create a brand new system or redesigning one that works well enough as is, maybe just try to streamline the system that exists now and learn to deal with it sometimes. Oh, Mr. Noob, I agree entirely. I, uh, I made a decision pretty early on in life that I was okay with the, the fuzz, the tax of living openly. I'm staring at this water on purpose because it's really fucking pretty. And it's probably c killing Twitch encoding, but whatever. So it's like, let's say come, someone comes up to you and they're like, hey, can I have $20? Whatever. I'm, I'm homeless. I feel like the easy way to live was to close yourself off. To be like, oh, this guy probably has a house. He's living out of like a, an apartment. He's just doing this. He, why should he get paid more than I do? I work for a living. Like, doing all that stuff. Sure. All right. But then I tell myself, you know what? Am I really going to miss five bucks? Really, am I going to? And if I run the, if I run the odds, let's say there's a 50% chance this guy... Or girl. Let's say they are truly homeless and they are truly suffering and they're truly starving and they just want some food. To me, it's worth maybe giving five bucks to somebody who's lying to me to actually giving five dollars to somebody who really needs and could use the money. 
I don't mind it. It's it's a sort of it's sort of like making, and it, and it's the same thing with paying taxes. I don't mind one out of a hundred, five out of a hundred, twenty out of a hundred. Maybe that no, twenty out of a hundred, pretty shitty. I don't mind a an amount of abuse of the system, because I feel like there are people who truly want to do the right thing, and hopefully the system will enable them to do that. Hopefully my taxes even if they even if they increase i think it's worth i think it's worth the two or three people who might take advantage of the system for the one who does get back into the workforce and can earn a living and and has a job they're proud of i disagree that there isn't an answer the answer is you build a system designed to evolve and change itself with the people which is one of the basic tenets of american government i think that counts as an answer i think it does um it's it's funny you bring that up, Eric. One of the things that I am I'm getting increasingly concerned about is that the system des Pass as designed was made with certain way. temporal temporal wraparounds, certain loops. So the idea that we have a president every four years and we re-elect uh, congressmen and women every th every four years, like stacked. Oh, Jesus of Gingers or Jesus of Gingers, either one. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. So you're right. That's that's meant to be the periodic like uh, re recalibration of the system. Do you not like your elected official? Well, just wait four years, give it a chance, let them try their way, and then vote again. And then we'll see what happens. And if the people decide that they want to change things, they can. It's a great idea. Um, what I wonder about is the the rapidity at which decision making affects the entire world. I feel like that's something that maybe the system didn't account for. That in a hundred, or in fifty, a hundred, five hundred years time, four years may be too much time. And I'm not saying that connected to current events, I'm just saying that connected to the fact that time is getting faster. The internet allows people to con connect and communicate, and that is accelerating what the human race can do in a shorter amount of time. So, I wonder, I wonder where then the compromise is, you know? God, this fucking, this game is so beautiful. Shit. Uh, just by the way, guys, I'm trying to speak abstractly about stuff. I would encourage you in chat to not reference real events or real political parties or real anything. Try and keep it abstract. Uh, that way nobody, nobody feels like their beliefs are being attacked. Uh, nobody, nobody feels as though they have to defend themselves. I would, I would really recommend that. Um, there's no reason to get, not that anyone is, but there's no reason to get antagonistic about this stuff. We're, we're speaking purely theoretically. Um, and, and I don't want to get into like al alternate fact shit, but just please bear in mind that one, I think one of the axioms of, of, of civil discussion is that two people can have different ideas and they can both be right for themselves, you know? Because we're so caught up in debates, if anything, I feel like things still take as long as ever. And, yeah? Yeah, you're not wrong. And I feel like, again, that's the point. So, it's the other side of the coin, right? Uh, it's like the system... The system may be straining under its under its temporal restriction, but that was also by design to make sure that no one makes rash decisions. To make sure that what is it that the whims of the people are uh, are or the people are protected from their own whims in a way. I've always been curious about squatting, especially for the homeless. I had a friend who lived in a squat that essentially turned into a historic building. They didn't have a choice, seeing as they were a child. They've spoken about it quite a bit lately. I guess my question is, where do people fall in squatting? I feel like if you have an abandoned building, is it not better to have people homeless or, other, or elsewise occupy it? And I mean, that's tough, because when people occupy a building, they generate trash, they generate waste. It's not clean. And and maybe the ethical homeless person can live in a... can squat somewhere and take out, take out their trash and not cause a mess, but... I don't know. I've I've seen it happen sometimes. A tent will just pop up somewhere in LA, like on my commute. And I'll be like, "Oh, that wasn't there yesterday." And I'll be like, "Well, hey, God bless, man. Hopefully you're you're making a go of it." 
And then a week later, there's nothing but trash just thrown all around the tent. And I'm like, well, okay, that's a fucking eyesore. But I'm not homeless, so I can't really fucking judge right now. Still, I do wish you didn't throw shit everywhere. This game looks surprisingly non-linear. Yeah, young boy, it's... So, this level is when the game, like, really opens up. Um, like, vertically as well as horizontally. So, you kind of go through the ruins of, of New York here. And you can go through all these broken buildings on multiple floors. You can go through on the street level. You can go through, like, underground. And it's all this, like, interconnected space that you can explore and pick off answers. Or pick off, uh, sorry, pick off enemies one at a time. The stealth is a little, a little raunchy in that if any one enemy sees you, the alarm immediately goes. Like, the, uh, the captains immediately sound an alarm, which is kind of a bummer. I wish there was a little more fuzz to it, but... Glad I got to you got to hear me call someone young boy. Son of is there more to that story than the homeless person littering? Oh, it could be because the police trashed it. That's a good point, Morgan. I didn't think about that. Yeah, no, it's uh again, this is whoops. I think it it truly does. This is just one of those those basic things that that is good good for everyday living, I think. For every human, for every situation they're in, for every time they want to say this is how things should be done. And it's okay to say that sometimes. But I think for all those examples, I think it's time I think it's it would it would really improve things if people would really really drill down and ask themselves do I truly understand the situation from every possible angle? Have I lived this situation? Do I have personal experience with it? Taking that second to sort of calm myself sometimes. Fuck. And we're in alarm territory. Alright. Uh, see, yeah, alarms come quickly in this game. That's kind of the bummer. I do wish... The moment anyone squeezes, squeezes off a loud round, the alarms are sounding and holy shit, there's a lot of people. There's one. Okay. Shit. Oh, they got me. Alright. Okay, it looks like looks like Assassin's Creed is done downloading. Let me give this uh, section one more shot. But you have a ton of homeless by my work. Must go through the unlocked dumpsters and just throw everything in the parking lots. Nothing like showing up to work and having to clean up trash and realize someone pissed on the door. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, with some big boy paragraphs happening right now. Yeah, it seems to be pretty respectful, so I'm okay with it. I don't know. I. I truly want to stress. I guess let me let me let me put these things out there. You open exchange of ideas, just be respectful. The one thing we don't tolerate is intolerance. Um if if you're throwing out ideas that involve the intentional the intentional depriving of rights to any any group of people based on sex, race, or, or any arbitrary qualification. That shit is right out. Not accepted. Every, everything else is, is pretty fine. Provided it doesn't get personally insulting. Have you seen the comments under the Los Angeles Metro ads by chance? It's all people complaining about using the trains as bathrooms. Really? Cyborg, that's odd. I've ridden the LA Metro a lot, and I've never really had an issue with that. Honestly, the... Biggest, grossest issue I've had with the LA Metro is, is like on Friday and Saturday. People ride the Metro drunk as fuck and they'll barf on the train or on the bus. That stuff has uh, happened more than once. No, I've. I have, I have more of a gripe with like people who play their phones out loud and, and white girls that barf on the, on the train than I do homeless. They're usually pretty quiet. They might smell, but.
I do like this too, like the way that the guns animate, because it does let you really appreciate how amazing the uh, the gun models are. It's mostly the red line, the one that goes through the quote unquote bad na neighborhoods. The red line goes through a lot of stuff. I used to ride the red line to work. Um, granted, that was like three or four years ago. Yeah, I take the red line from Koreatown to Hollywood. And there it goes. Alarm! Assholes. We consider people who set up a tent or an RV a free litter. We see people who publicly urinate and defecate and assume that every homeless person does that. I mean, it happens. It certainly happens, but... I would never profess to be an exper er, an expert on the matter. I always like the fact that you seem to be able to argue for things you don't believe in. Even when I disagree with you, I'm happy to follow you and your reasoning. Empathy can be really hard to acquire. Glad to, to see more people admit they are flawed. To me, nothing gives a person more credibility. Cage money, yeah, I I agree. Uh, it, and it's it sounds a little it sounds a little self. It sounds a little egotistical to agree with a compliment in that regard, but I... I'm a firm believer that... No, no human's mind is more profound than anyone else's. So, if someone believes something, and they're still a person, and they still arrived at those, those beliefs for a reason, and even though it seems like... It seems like more and more belief is becoming... manufacturable... Like, the, pr the process by which you can get people to empathize with you and rally to you. The narrative is getting drilled down of how to manufacture that following. Like, you have to, you first have to pitch yourself as an underdog. You have to have some kind of massive enemy to fight. The narrative crafting is getting pretty, pretty, uh, pretty elegant. I've seen a lot of YouTubers follow the same the same beats and they achieve an intense amount of success pitching themselves as a struggling underdog versus some massive faceless corporate enemy that wants nothing but control and to silence to silence any any upstart and they're representing you too that's the other aspect it's like I'm doing it for you guys we're, we're we are in this together and also, you should go to my Patreon and give me money. It's, it's just... Seen, seen the, uh, the... Same narrative threads get pulled. So as much as, as there, are, there are narrative things that work on people, and convince them to believe certain things, I think that individuals are still worthy of, like, being listened to and being heard. That's the big thing, right? I feel like when people feel like they're not being listened to, that's that's what prompts a lot of the extreme behavior. And and I, as I was kind of insinuating in previous streams, just because you you maybe aren't the just because you you have received benefits from an existing system doesn't mean that you don't feel like you're not being heard. That makes sense. So I get it. I, I get a lot of it. I've donated like two times in the past year, so I've done my part. I'm not funding your damn capitalism no more. I would not want you to, Morgan Farts. Keep your money, please. Do something better with it than I would have, like I said. All I'm gonna do is uh, buy a processor. And I but wait for that processor to even be available. Speaking of uh, better processors, I'm kind of hoping that this this holiday I get to do what I did last holiday and do some like streamathons of Witcher 3. I'm kind of hoping that can become like an annual thing. I'll just slowly chip through Witcher 3 only around Christmas time, doing some like eight to ten hour streams over the break. But yeah, look at this. Like you can you can go you can go through the street level. You can work your way through this abandoned building. Upgrade your weapons, which I'm going to do. 
Let's make a Lawrence squat, a place full of quintessential gamers. Well, I better have working electricity then. You picked up Divinity 2 yet? No, I need to. That's what I did last year for my last Christmas break from school. It took a month to beat Witcher 3. Ugh. God, that's awesome. Flat Matt. So I, I have fond memories of the, like Christmas breaks I got when I wasn't working, because like by the time I was fifteen I was working every Christmas break. But before that, there was a yeah, there was one Christmas where I was like, I'm gonna play every Final Fantasy game. And I did. And it was like I have a lot of good memories of that. Uh as someone who lives a lot of time in my own head, I wonder about like, should I really should I really think fondly on see here machine pistol I'm gonna go with the jungle magazines so it's like I want to I want to upgrade the two to the two modes of gameplay stealth and balls out actually armor piercing probably better yeah I'll go with armor piercing All right. but yeah the I probably should not finally reflect on the times I was able to just ultimately cocoon myself in my own my own I guess safe space if you want to if you want to put modern parlance on it of just being being all bundled up with nothing but my own brain, playing video games I like in my apartment, reading websites and stuff. It is nice though, man. When you're fucking, when you're fucking 16, and you're just being bombarded by confusing thoughts, it's nice to sort of retreat every now and again. Cocoon. Oh shit. Kickflips. You have you have hit the nail on the head. Oh, Sebastian. Sebastian. Looking dapper in his bow tie. Watch out, ladies. He groomed his beard today. So the thing gets me about, about stealth in New Colossus is... How do you deal with these fucking... Whoops. 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 As long as he doesn't shoot, it's stealthy. There we go. Yeah, the stealth rules in in the New Colossus are kind of weird. A land squat where nobody gets laid. Who knows? Maybe it'll be some kind of like hippie commune. Free love, free love land party. I had to stop playing so many games because I realized it was making me really confrontational for no reason. Oh, that's interesting. Good on you for, uh, for realizing that. Games are becoming boring to you these days? Platinum, is that because you're, you're playing so many of them, or you've played, like, they don't surprise you anymore? You're spending your time playing older games? I was gonna say, that's okay. A lot of modern games bore me too, because they're not actually video games. A lot of video games don't have, like, a solid mechanical core. It's just a series of, uh, Okay, so if you... Interesting, okay. So if you have a stealth gun and you shoot a drone down, it still doesn't sound the alarm. I'm, I'm slowly sussing out the rules. It's like... It has to be a gunshot. A gunshot or an enemy seeing you. Everything else doesn't count. Okay. Because those drones were fucking me up before, it, and I assumed that if I shot one, it would immediately sound an alarm, but it sounds like if you just knock one out with silenced weaponry, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Walking Dead. Yeah, Walking Dead's a television show. And that's fine, if you want to watch a television show. But if you want a video game that doesn't bore you, then maybe that's not the right thing. You think you're becoming jaded? I mean, the thing is, there are so many different kinds of games, and, all the, and so many good versions of all of those different kinds of games that I don't think jaded is the right word. I think you you're getting over a certain kind of game. You have played that game enough that it no longer works for you. It finally loaded. Now I'm compelled to drink Bud Light. Uh, yeah, I went through a 40 of that yesterday. Quality drinks for quality folks. Alright, guys. Uh, it looks like... Uh, you assume that somebody made a competent alarm system in Wolfenstein. Rookie mistake. Eric, the, the framework is still there. I don't mind it. It's, it's not very realistic, but... It does work, 
and for, from video game terms. So, you know, like Metal Gear tried to be real, but you still figured it out, right? A while back you had a stream where all the donations you matched to a certain point, and you donated that to the ACLU. I was curious how much got donated. Um, I think it ended up being around $1,100, I think was the ultimate thing. Um, I have I have records if you want me to look it up. That's one of those things that I take pretty seriously. Um, I've always felt that like when influencers or whatever do uh, charity events, I've always thought it was a little distasteful that they didn't post clear and public record of, uh, of all that stuff. So if I ever do that, I'm going to make sure that like... All the numbers are, are available and all the, all the, everything is visible. So that's, I, I posted it to the Discord because I didn't want it to be like a virtue signaling thing. Um, for the, for the audience that is there. Yeah, okay. 1155.18. I, I wanted, to me that was like the audience that would care. And if I blasted it out to Twitter, I'd get some assholes howling at me. Like, I donated to the NRA, same amount. I'm like, I don't care, man. I don't care. I wasn't saying it for that. So yeah, that that's kind of why I didn't really um, spread it around. All right, uh, hold on. I'm gonna quit the game so it doesn't potentially blue screen on me. Man, that's a really cool way to do unlocks, by the way. What a so. NRA wasn't a great example. Well, I only said that as an example because somebody said that to me directly, Morgan Farts. I wasn't speaking facetiously when I talked about a, uh, oh, look, some old friends. When I talked about a, uh, uh, when I talked about, when I was doing that stream, actually, there was some dude who was like, well, I'm going to donate to the NRA in your name. And I was like, I don't care, dude. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> this isn't combat, all right? That was just me. Oh, it was just joshing you? Okay. Uh, yeah. It's it's funny sometimes when people think they can get in your, uh, get all up in your head. It's just like, man, you're, you're just, you're just down there. You're down there rolling around in the mud. And I'm here not caring. So, and forever it shall be. All right. Uh, I'm going to put it in BRB mode a bit. Let's freshen up my drink. Uh, and probably do something that's not rum this time. Maybe a little vodka, vodka crack up soda. Yeah, it is crack up, or crack up cola. My bad. I don't know. It's probably barely visible. Webcam's blowing up. Kind of like the aesthetic, spaced out vaporwave text. All right. Uh, we'll see. We'll get Assassin's Creed up and going, and I'll see you guys soon. Luck visiting. Kind of like trick or treating. Tr exactly like trick or treating. And how generous you are determines how lucky you are. So, so the ancestors are the ghosts that we see. Everybody gets dressed up as a ghost That's and a right. witch and those types of things. That's really interesting. Now, one of the other things about, about Hallow's Eve, I think, is, is the. the issue of divination. I think that's a very big thing that goes on that's in right. Halloween. It's the beginning of the year. Got to find out what's what's going to happen to you this year. Exactly. So there's some websites that, that we were talking about earlier that we can actually look at or you can get, uh, what was it? We had there are several exercises I like to use before beginning any psychic exercise to reduce stress and tension. They're called preliminaries, and they're easy and portable to use. They help you focus and relax. In fact, once you practice them, you can do them without even thinking, and nobody can tell you're doing them. Since we all experience stress and tension in our lives, you can also use these preliminaries anytime and anywhere throughout your day. While you're stuck in a traffic jam, waiting at the doctor's office, before a test or interview, and speaking with your mother-in-law for the third time that day. Let's practice this simple exercise called releasing excessive energy together. Situate yourself so that your body's comfortable. You can be sitting or reclining and place your hands on an inanimate object. Anyone will do, the sides of a chair, or couch, or bed, the telephone while you're talking, the desk or table before you, the steering wheel of your car in that traffic jam and place your feet on the floor 
or the end of the couch or bed if you're lying down. Just let any tensions you might feel move through your hands into the inanimate object and through your feet into the floor. Just let it flow. You may feel a tingling or rush of energy, or you may feel nothing at all in your extremities. This is not a measure of your psychic abilities. We're not testing, remember? We're just exploring. Just let the energy go into the inanimate object. If you put your hands on your body or any other living thing, you won't hurt yourself, but you will simply put your tensions back into your body or living thing and have to start all over again. When you feel you wish to stop, just do so. See how calm you feel? You may come back to this exercise anytime you feel tense, before, during, or after we do a psychic exercise. You walk into a house in suburban Washington, naked, with a 12-pack of beer, yes or no? Yes. Okay. Today, you're on the internet again. You have an inappropriate conversation with a boy you think is 13, and you set up a meeting here at this fast food restaurant. What was your intention? I don't know. The man admits he knows what he's doing is illegal. Then why do you do it? 
I need help, and that's what I'm seeing a psychiatrist for. As incredible as this looks, that a man would do this twice in two days, Lieutenant Jacoby isn't all that surprised. Don't these people know that this is illegal and that very possibly they could be talking to a decoy or getting pulled into some sort of undercover investigation? Well, if you look at the Internet and the amount of people who are soliciting these types of crimes, your chances of getting caught, caught are probably fairly slim. Maybe that's why so many of the men who visited our house walked in so confidently, almost like they own the place. Remember Rabbi David Kay? We'll see. Despite his actions caught on hidden camera and his graphic internet exchange, Rabbi Kay called us several times, claiming he did nothing wrong. However, earlier this week, he resigned his staff position, informing his employer he was going to be featured in this Dateline story. He also had no comment about this picture Dateline found while investigating the rabbi's background. It shows Kay in a group photo, including two other rabbis caught and convicted of soliciting a child for sex on the Internet. Do you ever think to yourself, I can't believe how many of these people are out there? It, it's overwhelming at times. In the end, most experts agree it's really up to parents to keep children safe from online predators. If you could give parents one single piece of advice, what would it be? Hey there, it's your old pal Tom. Got some big news, but let's get the big guy to help me out. Get ready, playtime is over for the girls. Starting March 17th, Toonami's got the new deal. Let's do it. New Tom, new absolution, new shows. Say no goodness. Battle begins with G Gundam at 5. I've seen that technique. 5 30. All new Dragon Ball Z. What I represent can never be destroyed. At 6, the Spirit Detective Yu Yu Hakusho. And at 6 30, the figure of the Wandering Samurai, Baroni Kenshin. And so the true battle finally begins. Ooh, it's so sweet. He always makes it sound so good. Hey, don't forget to log on to Nami.com and check the exclusive online comic and find out how I got this new look. It's a bit of a tale. See you March 17. Later. Me and you, and you and me, no matter how they toss the dice, it had to be the only one for me is you. Something's gone wrong in the happy-go-lucky world of Nintendo. Introducing Super Smash Brothers, where all your favorite characters go toe-to-toe -to -toe in one four-player star-studded slam fest, only on Nintendo 64.